In today's video, I'm going to show you the most valuable tips and tricks you'll need for your newborn so you can also get some rest. Hey, it's Morgan. Welcome to the Passable Parent Channel. I've been a pediatric nurse for the past 10 years specializing in early childhood development, and I'm also a mom. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And make sure to comment down below if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Newborn babies tend to have a bedtime around 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and 12 a.m. at night. And because their bellies are still so small, they need frequent feeding, so anticipate that nighttime sleep for newborns is more of a long nap and that your nighttime sleep will be frequently interrupted for dirty diapers and feedings. This is normal and to be expected, but by following the tips I have for you, you can help your baby sleep better and not in your arms. Tip number one, keep the room cool. The ideal temperature is between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. You never want to dress baby too warmly because this actually increases the risk of SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome. When dressing your baby for nighttime sleep, think about how many layers you are wearing and dress your baby similarly. No head coverings, no blankets, no crib bumpers, nothing else in the bassinet or crib with your baby. And look for a firm mattress and always place baby on their back to sleep. If you have a sleep sack or a swaddle, they usually have a chart on how many layers to keep a baby in underneath to avoid overheating your baby or your baby being too cold. At the first signs of rolling, make sure to unswallow your baby's arms. If using a pacifier, they are not recommended if breastfeeding until at least six weeks, which is basically a conservative estimate of breastfeeding being well established. My next tip is know the difference between light sleep and when your baby is actually awake. This can be really confusing for parents because it may look like your baby is awake. Their eyelids may be moving, their arms might be moving around, and they might even be making some noises that sound like fussing. Newborns spend most of their sleep in light sleep and they only go into deep sleep for short periods of each sleep cycle. When in deep sleep, your baby's body is more still and looks more similar to adult sleep. You see that chest rise and fall and not a lot of movements. When baby is in light sleep, it is very easy to accidentally wake them. Your baby is truly awake when they are loudly crying or if it's been about two to three hours since they last ate because they will be hungry. They also may wake and cry loudly if they have a dirty diaper, are hot, cold, or woken up by a noise that startles them, or are simply no longer tired because they have been sleeping on and off for an extended period of time. My next tip for you is to keep the room dark. Blackout shades are extremely helpful. This ensures that when your baby is in a light sleep stage, they are not stimulated by any lights and woken up. My next tip is to use a sound machine and keep the room quiet. Use a white noise or sound machine. This prevents your baby from being startled or accidentally woken up when in that light sleep stage. You want a white noise machine that plays a nice, consistent, and constant sound. I will make sure to link my favorites in the description box below. You also want to make sure that the sound machine is not too loud. Keep it at the minimum effective level. My next tip is to swallow your newborn baby. Swaddling mimics the scrunched up safe feeling that your baby had in the womb. It dampens that startle reflex that your baby has, especially in those light sleep cycles. Make sure to stop swaddling your baby at the first signs of rolling. Once your baby shows signs of rolling, they need their arms free for safe sleep. I personally don't like traditional swaddles, not only are they really hard for parents to get their baby in the swaddle properly, but your baby also breaks out of them pretty easily. I prefer the Sleepy Swaddle by Happiest Baby and also the Halo brand swaddle. I will make sure to link both of those down below in the description box if you wanna check them out. They take the work out of swaddling and save parents from having to get up and re-swaddle baby every time they break free. My next tip for better newborn sleep is to invest in a good cool mist humidifier. This helps with your baby's breathing. Your baby's nasal passages are so small and some parents find that sleeping with a cool mist humidifier really helps their baby sleep better at night. Newborns make a lot of different noises and it can be really scary for new parents if they think that their baby is not breathing properly. Cool mist humidifiers help with any nasal congestion your newborn may have. My next tip for you is that when your baby wakes to eat, which is going to be usually every two to three hours, you don't wanna overstimulate your baby. 
You want to keep the room dark and if possible, try to feed them in that same room. You can set up a nursing station or bottle station for your baby for those nighttime feeds. Use a nightlight if needed, but try not to turn on all the lights because this will stimulate your baby and make it much more difficult for them to go back to sleep. The same goes for those diaper changes. If at all possible, if you can set up a diaper changing station or a caddy in the same room, this is ideal for not overstimulating baby. My next tip for you is to avoid an overtired baby. Newborns need to sleep after about every 45 to 120 minutes awake. Sleep cues include rubbing their eyes, avoiding eye contact, yawning, and zoning out. Once your baby becomes overtired, it is much more difficult to get them to go to sleep. And my final tip for you is to stay consistent. Babies love routine and consistency. Developing a good bedtime routine, even early on, helps lay the foundation for great sleep. This bedtime routine can even involve a book, a bath, as your baby gets older, and a nice massage to put on their lotion and a final nighttime feed. And make sure to remember that usually around two to three weeks, your baby will go through a cluster feeding or a frequent feedings and wakings. And this is just because they're having that rapid brain growth. Their bodies and their brains are growing and developing so rapidly, which requires them to need more milk or formula during this time. If you choose to breastfeed and are struggling with cluster feedings, or want to better prepare yourself for when the time comes, make sure to check out my other video on how to survive cluster feedings. I hope this video was helpful and informative and gives you some tools to help your newborn sleep better. Please know that you are not alone. The newborn stage and sleep with a baby is difficult and exhausting, but it doesn't last forever and you will get through this. Please like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And feel free to comment down below if you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Thank you so much for your time today and for your support. Hope to see you in the next video.